And That's the best defense here, in the league. And to sit here and look yeah. at how that defense demolished Arizona, and I know Arizona didn't have their number one wide receiver, and they were third, and Kyler Murray, and blah, 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 blah. blah. To, to look how, how they demolished that top team that was hot in the thing, and, you know, things happen, cookie crumbled, you know, and then Tom Brady to come here and start getting demolished the same way and then put that, all right, I'm Tom Brady on and actually bring his team back. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of From the Sideline Podcast. I am back with the boys. How you guys doing? Doing good. good, I got GK in the house. What's up, GK? Feeling good. Thanks, man. All right. You ready for this? I mean, today going to be a good one. Let's get it. All right. we We got Roy in the house. What's up, Roy? I'm back and better than ever. Let's get it started. And we got a we got a new guest in the house. Go ahead and introduce yourself, T. Hey, I'm T with the Sports Talk with ZNT. Um, I started my channel about a year ago. I talk NFL, uh, NBA, that's uh, off-season, mock drafts, all that good stuff. So I'm ready to get into this today. That's right. Go check them out. And you guys know we can't start the show without starting with, with the divisional round. So uh, yeah. we, we got to get into this. A lot of things happen. Uh, fans are going crazy online. Uh, um, I, I don't know, man. We had some good games. We had some shocking games. There were some teams we picked um, that I think the majority of the majority of us picked that uh, didn't come through with Green Bay and, uh, and Tennessee. So let's get into that, that Tennessee game. All right. Cincinnati, Tennessee. I'm going to start with you, GK. What did you see in that game, man? Um, yeah, so I was super surprised. I just thought, like – veteran team against a young team the veteran team would just come out on top but um yeah just I guess just too many mistakes by by the Titans um Tannehill really starting off the game like that really surprised me you know like and it just comes down to little things that you'd expect from a veteran like just looking off the safety and you know if he looks off the safety on the first play it's probably completion and they they probably go you know into that drive with some good momentum but um you know, unfortunately for Uncle Frank, who uh, is for some reason MIA right now, uh, you know, they just came up a little bit short. We hope and all and by well. the way, McPherson, mm-hmm. who people scrutinize the Bengals for getting drafted, I guess, somewhat early for a kicker. That guy is the man, bro. That guy's the man. Because apparently he said something like, uh, you know, right before the kick, he's like, he's like, this is sweet, man. We're advancing in the playoffs. And then he he goes in and nails that's the kick. That's confidence, mm-hmm. though. That's mm-hmm. confidence. confidence. And you got to have that going into the game. And that's what I've seen in the game. I've seen the Bengals going with a lot of confidence. And I didn't see any confidence from Tennessee. Before I kick it to UT, right, I want to get this off my chest, man. Kind of upset Frank not here. But, you know, some, sometimes things happen. We uh, we wish him the best. We'll, we'll get, we hope he's here next episode because I'm still going to have it for him. Right? I don't know oh, about you guys, too. but I'm not letting <laughs> it go. But you're going to get it right now. All right. What was, what was Tannehill thinking on that first play, man? I think that's where it started. Like for me, that's where it started. Like he comes out and I'm sitting here thinking, I was just saying that to you guys before we got on, like, yo, I'm thinking, all right, D- Derek Henry in the game. All right. They're going to start off getting his legs warmed up. Here mm. come the run. Or some yeah. Tannehill steps back, throws the ball, interception. I'm I'm losing my mind. Like, what what are what is the coaching thinking? Like, what are you thinking calling that play? But not only I, that, Tannehill, what are you thinking throwing the throwing that ball? Mm-hmm. I think the Titans, what I think the Titans were expecting them to be able to play the run that game. I think they knew they was gonna try to use Derrick Henry a lot. So they were gonna try to uh, you know, counter that by throwing the ball in the first play mm-hmm. of the game, which was a bad idea. Because mm-hmm. Ryan Tannehill made, didn't look off the safety, missed the throw, whatever happened, it just was a bad throw, bad play calling, bad execution. Um, I just – that's all I could say about that. I'm not sure what their thought was going into that play call because, I, like you said, I would have ran it with Derrick Henry. Or to my – another thing I was going to bring up, Derrick Henry – 20 rushes, 61 yards, but Devontae Foreman had four rushes, 66 yards. Mm-hmm. I think they should have used Foreman a lot more in the game plan. Yeah. I mean, just watching that game, I mean, 
it was it was just so crazy because every, I think just everyone was logically thinking, okay, they're gonna start off, you know, getting Henry like how like how Troy said, you know, get their, get his legs warm, you know, get him like back into game speed, you know, get him get him used to it so you can use him not in just this round but potent the you know future rounds as well so he's ready to go, and then they just put the the their their, their life in the hands of Ryan Tannehill, which is not not a good move. Not a good move, never will be. Uh, I just think he's more of a game manager, and I think that kind of went and showed it that you know you can't you can't tell Ryan Tannehill to go out there and say, "Hey, go win us this game." It's not going to happen. I mean, let's be let's be honest with each other. But I mean, shout out to Cincinnati, man. I mean they they came out they came out ready to play. They came out with so much fire, and confidence everyone gets uh, yes saw. so much confidence, and you could just tell that it in the way that they played. Them. You yeah, can tell the way they play. Of the Titans yeah. look so sluggish on both sides of the ball. And like how you said with uh, Foreman, you know, I mean, he's when Henry was out, he wasn't doing too bad. You know, he was getting a majority of those touches. He was doing something with them. And I think maybe, I don't know, I think they may have, should have used him a little bit more there. But overall, shout out to Money McPherson, man. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, people, people, people like to people like to hate on people for drafting kickers. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes it can come back and bite you in the butt. It does happen. But when you know you got someone really good, especially someone like him. So, I mean, you, you got to take them while you can get them. I mean, you just shows. Yeah. I think this this while I'll, I'll finish up. But this divisional round really showed the importance of kickers. You know, I think that was you cannot get over how important the kicker is, especially when games are so close. I definitely agree with so that. So looking at looking at the wide receivers coming back in this on the Tennessee Titans, right? We had AJ mm-hmm. Brown, five receptions, 100, 142 yards with a touchdown. That's that's amazing, you know. We had mm-hmm. uh, uh, Julio Jones with six catches, uh, sixty two yards, and uh, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, so it's sure. like I, I'm starting to think like, who can I blame this on? Hmm. I'm going to blame it on Ryan Tannehill because it's not fair yeah. for me not to be consistent here, okay? He played trash. He threw three interceptions. Yeah, he threw 220 yards, but it wasn't enough. Like, I don't understand it. Like, I don't I don't understand it. You let Joe Burrow come out and throw 340, what, 48 yards on, yeah. on that defense, only one interception, no touchdowns. But these guys got it done. He put his team in position when they couldn't get the touchdown to make sure they was at least getting th- points on the board. And that ultimately came back. And, and helped them win. They won by three points. They outplayed Tennessee uh, most of the part. Um, I think you guys are right with the running game. They should. They could have switched it up a little bit more. Derrick Henry had 20 carries. Could have probably gave him like 17 and gave Foreman a couple of more to see what he mm-hmm. could have done because he was rushing for like 16 yards a carry. So, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't see it as, even though Tennessee put 16 points up, I don't think they played a good game. So, yeah, uh, I agree. Thing, Go ahead, Ray. I was just saying, just watching that game, it just kind of like – it just seemed like Cincinnati just was the better team. And that's crazy to say because obviously the Titans were the number one seed, but it just – just watching that game and generally looking at it from a neutral perspective, it just like – Cincinnati looked like they wanted to win that game more, to be honest with you. Just in, you can see that in how they played, but it's just like the Titans look so flat. It looked like, you know, they came off that bye and they're like, oh, we're playing Cincinnati. You know, they're a young team. Yep. They're not going to – I don't think they gave him the the due respect as much as I, and that surprised me because the Titans didn't get a lot of respect in general. I mean, we have people saying that, you know, this is the, one of the weakest one seeds in NFL history. Like, so, you know, you got people coming out Shout and out saying Bushman. these things. Shout out to Bushman. Shout I mean, Bushman. like, I mean, I mean, was he wrong? Let's be honest. Was no, he wrong? He, he I don't right. know. I mean, Tighten you know, down. We're going to talk about <laughs> it when he get here on, uh, next, on the next episode. Yeah. Listen, all would have been forgiven too like they had the ball with two and a half minutes to go and Mm -hmm. it was 16 to 16. And I believe they were almost at midfield or around, you know? And so if Tannehill drives a touchdown right there and they score, then the game's probably over and the Titans win. And then we're talking about, all right, what did the Bengals do wrong? Um, So I don't think so. I think we will be talking about the Bengals played a good game. Just like we're going to, when we get to the bills, I don't think anybody not going to say the bills played a good game. So mm-hmm. I think we would have gave that same kind of respect to them. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's one thing I got to say, though. They did play because because I don't think if the if, if the if the Titans win, I don't think the, the game played the way the Bengals played it with that confidence and how we're all bigging them up. I don't think that changed. I think they still would have played with confidence throughout the game thinking they would have won it. Mm-hmm. So that's I, what I I'm saying. We would have gave them we would have gave them yeah. that respect like, yo, these guys sport to be a young team to be where they are instead of folding to the 
to the the, the veterans or the, the number, top, one, number one seed. They exactly. actually went out there and played their hearts out, even though they still lost. They gave it everything they got. I got to say, what a huge difference from the wild card round to the divisional round. Because, like, you know, wild card yeah. round, everyone, it was blowout left, blowout right. Everyone's getting blown out. And then you come to th- this this not weekend here, not and, like, blowout. not one blow. Every game seemed like a, like, balls-to-the-wall playoff game. It was. You know, like, this was, like, it doesn't get any better than, the, like, this was one of the best weeks in football I mean, I can in recent memory, to be honest with you, just with every single game being so close, so competitive, and you know, just it was such a joy to watch. If you if you missed any of these games, I said any of them, you know, I feel kind of bad for you if you're a really big yeah. football fan because you missed you missed a great like a once in a oh, every watching the highlights, week, watching yes. the highlights ain't gonna do it. Does yet. not do any justice. Nah. Does not do any justice. GK, you had something else to say? Uh, no, I was just gonna say like, like don't forget the the Bengals did have a turnover and. Mm-hmm. Only scored one touchdown, like mm-hmm. four field goals and one touchdown. Yeah, but for the, for that for that, that young team, was. but that's what I'm saying. No, absolutely, team, yeah. I would have said was. even if they lost, they overachieved for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. I Agreed. I mean, they played to me to go out there against a Tennessee, you know, in that defense. How many times did they sack Joe Burrow? Nine. Oh my goodness, so it was that, terrible. That comes into account yeah, too. Was... Joe Burrow really couldn't get anything else. The Tennessee defense did their job most of the night. Yes, I understand. But like I said. Burrow still found a way to put his team in position where they weren't scoring touchdowns. They at least had a chance to kick a field goal, mm-hmm. you know? So that's what I'm saying. That's the difference. I, I don't think Tennessee came out with that, with their, with their, with that. We're the number one seed. We're going to run through this. And, and, uh, and I also think Cincinnati probably would have played it differently. Say they were playing a chiefs or a Buffalo bills. I think they would have went for it, been more aggressive on those, but since they realized, Hey, they got Ryan Tannehill. Uh-huh. And uh, we're gonna put the trust in our defense on this. They they weren't as aggressive. hmm That makes sense. Shout out Joe Shiesty, though. Glad for getting right. that win. Yeah. All right, let's move on to this 49ers pack again. Another letdown, another year, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I made a TikTok and, and I'm sorry, Aaron. That's how I felt. All right. That's how mm-hmm. I felt. All right. You screw you screwing people over, Aaron. You're screwing, you're screwing us over, man. We we got faith in you every year, Aaron. Every year, A A Ron. Every year, oh, we got faith in you, and you you go in. We, we like, yo, you're one of the best quarterbacks. You're up there. You're right below Tom Brady, and then you come out and you you have a performance, and it's, it, yeah, you you efficient twenty for twenty nine. But, and I know you guys can't say you blame everything on Aaron Rodgers, but how many times? I don't blame any of it on him. I wouldn't either, but we we expect it from him. We expect him. To go in and make it happen, I don't to think, go and be that guy. Right. I don't think. I don't yeah. think. What I mean is, let me clarify. I don't think. I think people have more faith in Aaron Rodgers to get it done than any anybody else on his team or any other counterpart to his team. The defense, the special teams, everybody relies like, yo, this guy is going to yes. find a way to get it done, and he didn't do it this this game. And I know it contributes to the 49ers kind of having you know Green Bay's number when it comes to the playoffs. Zero, mm-hmm. zero and six against the 49ers. I get it, but. We, we expect him to come out of this game, and that's all I'm saying. Go ahead, GK. Um, he didn't really have any mistakes, though. Mm-hmm. And, like, I couldn't agree. The, the mistakes on his team were made by special teams. Like, that's a mm-hmm. that's like a thir- literally a 13-point swing because, you know. Oh, I was getting there. The, mm-hmm. Like, the block punt turns into seven for them. So, mm-hmm. so, like, you can't fault the Packers' defense or credit the 49ers' offense mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. And then the missed field goal, so, you, you can't you can't fault the Packers defense or credit or or um I'm sorry, fault the Packers offense or credit the uh defense 49ers defense for that. Mm-hmm. So the, literally the one facet of the game where like your third stringers are playing and they just screwed up so bad. Like mm-hmm. when when it's below freezing and snowing, and you have a game where like three points is a difference. Or like, if you're the team that scores a touchdown, like you're probably going to win, which the Packers did both, like got in a field goal position, then had it blocked. They scored the touchdown for their team and the other team couldn't even score a touchdown on offense. So everything, you know, like looking at everything until you get to the part where what happened on special teams, like the Packers played better, like, and so people are, people are just, 
only blaming Aaron Rodgers. I'm like, dude, Aaron Rodgers threw no interceptions. He fumbled the ball not any times. He completed 20 passes. Jimmy G mm-hmm. only completed 11 passes, and he threw an interception. So, like, he absolutely – Outplayed. was the best quarterback mm-hmm. on the field today like not only like as a player and, but like and I so, I let better you, quarterback than I, the other quarterback i let you go because i seen your face but what i was leading up to is yeah we want aaron Rodgers to get it done yeah i feel that way i'm with the consensus yeah i'm mad at aaron for not figuring it out and doing something but with everything gj just said the special teams the the the, the punt the the field goal that's not on aaron so i think you know, when we're evaluating this one, I got to go a little easier. And I and everybody else got to go a little easier on Aaron because, like GK said, he didn't make no mistakes. Yeah, we we want him to get these big games. We want him to beat the 49ers. Mm-hmm. We want him to succeed. And then it's like the history with the 49ers for him, what he said about them not drafting him, you want him to be able to get over that hump, and he's not able to do it. So it's like everybody looked towards him because he's supposed to be on the level of Tom Brady. That's why it happens. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to be in the, on that level. So everybody looks at him as, yo, bro, why you not? figuring out because Tom Brady Tom Brady literally literally figured it out over this mm-hmm. weekend and lost off of a, somebody leaving Cooper Cup open the defense yep. gave this game up Tom Brady literally figured it out that's what he does and that's what yeah. I was saying about Kyler Murray a couple of episodes ago is that to be an elite quarterback a great quarterback in those pressure situations and Tom Brady went against the same defense in the Rams and they were doing the same thing to him you know but we're gonna get to that but, you know, I don't think all of this falls on Aaron this time, even though I was mad at him for not, you know, making that throw to, to somebody. And it's it's like it, I just wanted it to happen for him. I wanted him to get there. I want him to win another one. I have said this, you know, previous on the episode, but I am kind of hard on him because it's like, yo, I want you to figure it out. But this one ain't your fault. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I don't think it's his fault. I mean, but like how you said, we just have that narrative of just like, OK, this guy wants to be on the level of Tom Brady. Well, Tom Brady figures it out. And, you know, he just – he – I mean, this week, you know, Tom Brady didn't figure it out either. But uh, but the Green Bay is just like, you know, we always have that stigma around them in the playoffs. And, I mean, I thought this was going to be the year – I personally did where I thought they were going to break that stigma and break through and at least at least make it to the Super Bowl. I mean, I I had very high expectations for this team because at times when this team is clicking, they look they looked so dangerous. But, I mean, it seemed like Green Bay was in control of that game until that blocked punt. I feel like that that punt was the it was a whole momentum swing. I mean, in the exact opposite direction. And then after that, they didn't look the same. It looked like that deflated them so much. I mean, the special teams has been a problem for the Green Bay Packers, and not just this year for for numerous Many years. years it's, yeah. Yes, it's always been a problem with them. And then, but everyone always kinds of discounts and says, "Oh, it's just special teams." Well, I mean, I think that game kind of shows that special teams is a little more important than you think it is. Don't yeah. get me wrong; like GK said, you know, those a lot of those are your like third string guys. Those guys, guys yeah. don't usually get a lot of playing time. And, you know, it's but they it practice just goes, though. So but they practice. They, practice, they, they, they have ready special for days. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They should, they should they be have ready days. for in game situations, and they weren't. And, Agreed. And that goes Agreed. to you and G, what GK said. And, that's and what that's, I'm saying. It's not fair for Aaron. Like, go ahead. It's not. But it's that's that's what I'm saying, though, is just that they practice this. They have their own special teams practices. They have their, their special teams stay together. That's what they do. You know, I mean, when, when there's third string players, they're they're practicing with their position. Yes, but they also go to special teams practice as well. It's not like they don't they don't just go out there every Sunday and just say, oh, I guess I'm on the punt team now. Like, no, you you know what you're doing. And it's just, what I wonder, like mm-hmm. when you're the punter, right? And you see the guy coming at you because I, I, there's, there's this high school clip that went viral. Like, why wouldn't he just pull the ball back down, let the guy fly by him, and then kick it? Like, it's so, like you I see mean, him right there, and you're like, well, that, I'm going to just kick it anyway. Like, I would say that's easy, easier said than done. 110%. Like, because it's yeah. like he's angle. Blind, like it's he like sees the, him right in front of him. But it's still like the angle that he's coming at because even if you, you're thinking you could, like, juke or do a little step back, he might still hit you and affect your legs when you're trying to go over to kick it. So you might he might go trip you up. There could be a second guy in there. Like you can juke it. The NFL, we're talking about pros. This ain't high school. Mm-hmm. That's why I know I don't think you I think we have seen kickers do it. We have seen kickers in the NFL do it, but it's like they're they even like take it when they fumble the ball and they got to reposition real quick and kick it quick. It's the same like kind of aspect. You're just dipping the guy. But it, that's a lot of factors come in place because there are people rushing you and they know situation where they should know let me say that they should know situational football is if i go in to tackle this guy and he pulls that thing in that second guy better be in it or whack him 
Yeah. So, oh yeah, right. facts. But I I just remember watching the play and I'm yeah, like, I know what play you're talking about. I know what play you're talking about. Yeah, too. I know what yeah. play you're talking about. I had I had a friend. I have a friend who who played uh, D1 college. He was a punter and he ended up playing professional overseas. But uh, what he said is like I because I I did ask him one time. I was like, why don't they tell you to kind of do more with that with that that punt if you know it's going to get blocked? They said the punters are always taught. They said just try to get it off. Just try to get it off because at that point you you everything is lost if you think it's going to get blocked everything's lost anyway just try to get it off so i mean they just You're have just that that's to pretend like there's head. not a guy like right in front of you <laughs> like yeah. yeah they that's why you see them when <laughs> if you, I think that if you really watch the tall. punter watch the punter he does not take his eyes off of that ball you no, you could have it. you could have some it. crazy yeah. mess going on in front of you you wouldn't even know He's it just you just they stare at the ball yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, think, be in front of him I don't like, think that's uh, Yeah, uh, he could be twerking in front of him. He wouldn't even know. Uh, wouldn't even know. <laughs> like, my, this, I think the he, game has become a little more advanced. You could teach him a little <laughs> better than that. Nah, kickers, nah, nah, you don't teach kickers. You need to reteach, kick, re-teach kickers, all right? All these mm-hmm. field goals and easy yeah. damn kicks they're missing. Listen, these you don't want to give them bigger the opportunity. Take the opportunities away, right? <laughs> Go for more on fourth down. That's what I want to see next year. Bunk, yeah. bunk these kickers, all right? We don't need kickers <laughs> anymore. They miss anyway. I always, I always thought that that would be a good rule. Like, you're only allowed to have a certain amount of punts in a game. Like, like if you if you I make your, like, that. like yeah. if you yeah. like I let's say like you like like you can only like punt three the ball punts three. a game. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say like three punts a half. Like you have three timeouts a half. Like you know something yeah, like that. that Interesting yeah. concept. They ain't changing. Yeah. It. All right. They ain't changing it. Next All right, game. so I'm going to take a different angle on this Aaron Rodgers thing. Oh, this yeah, me. go ahead. Look, he, I know he played well, but he did not play well enough to win the game. And when has Rodgers showed us in recent history that clutch gene? I mean, other than in the regular season, we've seen it mm. plenty of times in the regular season. But postseason, look at the last three or four years. What, what has he shown us that makes us think this guy is top five over other guys in the NFL like Josh Allen? I can ex- mm-hmm. I can answer that. Joe Burrow. I know GK got the answer. I can see why GK is ready. <laughs> uh, you learn because they, they, they haven't they, they haven't set him up for success. I feel no, like I the, the setup the setup that. that he's been given. He should only be winning like eight games and not even making the playoffs. So the fact that with that. the setup that he's giving, he's making the playoffs. He's already doing more than should be asked of him. Like they're literally asking him to like. I, I would compare it to maybe to carry like, a team to like LeBron on the first yeah Cavs LeBron or like Cavs. AI on the Sixers like mm-hmm. they're they're putting all the eggs in his basket to like completely rely on him. Let me ask you this: like, would it have been possible for Aaron Rodgers to have a bad game, but the Packers still win? Probably no. not. No. Where like. There's been teams in the past where, like, the agree. quarterback can still have a bad game, but the team can win anyway. The Niners. Gar- I'll say Garoppolo. <laughs> exactly, exactly. 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 Yeah. exactly. So, like, you you have to just take that into consideration where, like, all right, let, let's just say That's our true. quarterback has a bad game. Are we still going to be able to win the game? And, like, if the answer is no, that means you're not even setting your quarterback up for success. Like, let you're me, just putting literally 100% let me, of the let me pressure ask a, on him. Let me ask a clear-cut question, right? When – when if – if Aaron Rodgers retires tomorrow, where does he sit in the history of quarterbacks? So, because I mean, on, he's not- I, hold on, because yeah. I'm here and I don't know if I, I don't, I don't agree with it, right? But I'm hearing people all night in these Facebook groups that we're in, you know, and uh, you know, on social media, other platforms saying Eli is a better quarterback than Aaron Rodgers, and that's not true. But they're basing wow. it off the, the consensus of what Eli had, all right. He got two rings out of it. So Rodgers, what he has had, he should have more rings out of it. And I kind of agree with the last part, but I'm not going to agree with the Eli is better than okay. Rodgers. But the question is, okay. yeah. I'm not agreeing with that. I'm not, I'm okay. not crazy. I'm not, okay. even though Eli's in this show, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not crazy. All right. Um, mm-hmm. But so where do we rank uh, Aaron Rodgers amongst the history of quarterbacks right now, if he retires quickly? Um. I, I would still say he's definitely top ten. I'm playing safe. I'm trying to I'm trying to go through quarterbacks in my head. I definitely top ten. Um, I don't know. It depends. It depends how many times a year he plays the Bears. Let's be honest. He owns the Bears. Um, uh, I definitely top ten. Only if top, you could have played the Bears uh, over the weekend. 
top five? Are, yeah, we, thinking top, are we thinking top five? I would go top five to top ten range, maybe even in between that. Maybe, yeah. Um, I'd say that. so. Sure. The, I, mean, I, think he's, I think it's top five. I think it's fair. All right, we're going to see. All right, we're going to revisit this, you know, next oh, year. Oh, yeah, we will. I All know right. we will. But let's get on to this. The 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 one of the games that have my blood, my blood pressure through the roof is this Bucks rams game. Woo! I'm sitting mm. here watching this game, and I'm, I'm just up on Facebook, tent, like, mm, Rams got it. It's over. Mm. And I told you I was texting that Bushman, then Bucks out. And then, and then I said to him, I said, hopefully this is not an Atlanta all over again. And as mm. soon as I sent that message, Tom Brady put the comeback on. Like yeah. it was like he read it. It was like he read the message. Oh yeah. Like he said, Troy see said something. You want to see it? You want to see it again? You want to see it again? And he did. <laughs> and this is what I mean when I said last week about uh, Kyler Murray and this week about Tannehill. Like Tom Brady played that same defense, bro. The same defense. And as the quarterback of the helm out there. Even though they were getting pressure on him, because we're not going to sit here and act like, you know, they didn't get no pressure on him. They got pressure on him. Mm-hmm. So, like, to sit here and be like, you know, oh, no, it's not it's not just Tom. Like, no, Tom got it done. Tom figured out a way to bring his team back and give them the best possibility to win the game. He, yes, Tom did it. Who did it? Who did it, GK? Disagree. Yeah. Who did it, GK? The Rams turned the ball over four times. And right. Tom- so Tom got the ball four extra times okay. and couldn't win. No. Like, so, so Tom puts up four, That's ten, fair. Ten, 10. So, so the Rams go 10 and 10 in the, in the second, the first and second quarter, the Bucks had three in the, in the, in the, um, in the third and fourth quarter, the, the Rams go seven and three, the Bucks go 10 and 14. Who is that on? Wait, I don't understand what you're saying. The, the Ram, the, the Tampa Bay put up 24 points in third and fourth quarter. Where the Rams right. put up twenty in the first quarter and only ten in the, in the third. I mean, ten a twenty in the first half and then ten in the second half. That's Tom Brady. It doesn't matter how many opportunities he got. Yeah, he got extra opportunities, but he did he use the opportunities to go down and put points on the board. Most of the time, he did to put his team in a great successful point to win the game. The game ended because of the defense, not because of Tom Brady. Tom Brady mm-hmm. brought his team back. You can't say that, GK. It's not there. So, he did everything so possibly in his will after getting busted in the mouth. You know, by the Rams he, to come back and be like, I'm not done yet. That's a that was amazing. Yeah. I don't even like Tom Brady. I respect him. And he, he, this he is coming from a under sixty percent and an interception and scored no touchdowns in the first half. Like that's right. trash. Th- that that is. But what did he do in the second half? Do a touchdown. Yeah, but, got his team in position. Let uh, the, the running back stepped up. Getting in getting garbage touchdowns. time. Garbage time. It wasn't garbage time. There was no garbage yeah, time when it no comes down to the last, yeah. last play. Yeah. It, how is it garbage time? When you're down 27 3, it's garbage time. How, that's not garbage time, bro. Ooh. With two quarters, how is it left not half, garbage half, time? When you're down like 27 4, right? Round. So, not, 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 not hold stage. on, hold on. I'm about to get no. you right here, GK. So, when Tom Brady put the comeback on Atlanta, he did that in garbage time. That was garbage time. 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 Yeah. He did it in garbage time and won the game. Garbage time is when you put points up and there's no way you win the game. That's garbage time. Stat that pattern, was yeah. not garbage time, bro. What Tom Brady did was put his team in a position to try to win. Only thing the defense had to do was stop them going to overtime. That's the defense get the coin gave, them, flip. gave the defense got the ball back for him four times. No, I'm talking about the last moment in the game. All the defense had to do was stop the, the Rams stop. from getting in field goal position. Which they gave up the big play. Or Tom could have scored a touchdown in the first half, and it would have been that's win for true. The but that no, it's not a win for the Bucks because you just add in the points. You don't know what the Rams do after that. You don't know if the Rams go out there and score another touchdown in the second half. We don't know. Mm-hmm. The, the Rams could have been playing conservative because they had the lead until Tom Brady mm-hmm. came back. And that like, oh, shit. I, I agree. Like, let's 100%. get on it. Like, and that happens. Teams take their foot off the pedals, but it's not fair to say Tom Brady didn't do what was necessary to to get his team to, to the win. He threw three hundred and twenty nine yards. Like yeah. he was putting, the, he was trying. Yo, he the ball in the, yo, times. the adjustments the Bucks made in the second half was amazing to go out there and put twenty four points up, ten in the third and fourteen in the second to put them in position to win the game. You can't take that away from him, GK, and that's all I'm saying. Tom Brady did that. He did that. Mm-hmm. He, he did sixty eight plays on and then offense, his, and then his and defense. He, he almost like that's not fair to say. It, it come it came yeah. down to his defense. Tom Brady got it's it done. Deep. It came and down I don't to even the like all me, Tom Brady. Blitz. Go ahead, say. Yeah, all out blitz. Came down I agree. To all out blitz by Todd Bowles. I've always Todd Bowles to me has always been overrated. 
I know what he did was great in the Super Bowl last year, but to me as a head coach, I've seen it before. Very vanilla defense. He runs all out blitz all the time. Um, teams catch on to it. You cannot blitz Matthew Stafford in that situation. I don't care what you think, what analytics say, what anything says. You cannot blitz Matthew Stafford in a situation like that. Mm-hmm. Especially no, I, with I Cooper agree. Cup and Odell Beckham on the field. Yeah. Some deep threats. No way. No way you let no that way. happen. It's. No. Uh, I mean, but it's – I mean, I got to I will tip my hat to the Rams because I mean, I'm I'm very glad they got it done. I wanted the Rams to win, but I did I did think Tampa Bay was going to win, but I'm glad the Rams won because I just love Matthew Stafford going out there, man, and just showing us what he could have done if he was on a good team. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Stafford played fantastic. I'm not saying he was perfect. I mean, 28, 28 for 38, 366 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, only got sacked twice with a QBR of 67. I mean, that's not bad. No, that's not bad. That's what I'm saying. I mean, is the room for improvement, of course. But, I mean, he's he's going out there and he's playing well. And I love to see that that Rams team really came together. Now, I thought they were going to let it slip away. I've always been I've always been a very leery person when it comes to playing prevent defense, and it's only the third quarter. I just think that's I think you're playing you're playing for them not to catch up and that's just like it was like heart attackable. Like it was like you could definitely tell that they were playing differently in the second half than the first half. But it's like you're giving up you're okay to give up 15 yard gains almost every other play. It's like that's not okay. I was playing Matten last night and um I was playing uh Dallas and I'm like, all right, I gotta make some adjustments because he's he's cutting me in the middle of the field. Like and then as I made my adjustment, he made his, then I made another. Like, that's the game. Like, make the adjustments. And I, I don't think – It's a coaching battle. Right. And I think the Bucks okay. did that great in the second half where they could have made adjustments in the in the first half. I agree mm-hmm. with GK there. They could have put some more points on the board and gave themselves a better chance at winning this game. But we can't we can't ignore what Tom did in that second half of that I game. I agree. 24 points. Yeah. Giving his team a chance to win. And it came down to uh, Cooper Cuff what 20 yard catch down the field to put him in field goal position and then they kick him me that that's on the defense to me yeah shout out like, to the Rams, again man. if we're gonna if we're gonna gk you was just with me in, in the consensus of giving uh green um aaron Rodgers the pass that's what i was just gonna bring up was because yeah. aaron like so you because you, you can't sit there and say all right the, the bucks defense gave tom the ball four extra times tom turned over the ball twice Aaron Rodgers did not get the ball four extra times, and he did not turn over the Tom ball twice. That's six extra possessions. Tom so, like, if 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 Rodgers got six extra possessions, the Packers probably would have won. No, hold on, Tom. Where, where was the second turnover at? He fumbled. He threw a pick, and he fumbled. Oh, okay. Because I only see two fumbles on a, on a stat sheet, and they're both by Leonard Fournette. Yeah, he fumbled, and then uh, the Rams he- came back, and they had a fumble. Oh, I'd that's right. They, they gave it right yeah. back. They gave yeah, it right I don't, back. I don't see yeah. it. I see. I see one rush, but it don't. It didn't count the. He fumbled, but then they fumbled. literally the next play at the Rams fumbled. Yeah, the fumble did right back. Cam Akers that. fumbled. Yeah, but no, I, I would agree. Tom Brady could have played better, but I'm. Um, uh, he played well enough to put his team. Fifty-five percent completion. That's not good. I know 14, 14 a uh, quarterback rating of fourteen. I I get it. I get mm-hmm. it. He, but that's a great defense he's going against. And That's the best defense here, in the league. And to sit here and look yeah. at how that defense demolished Arizona, and I know Arizona didn't have their number one wide receiver, and they was third, and Kyler Murray, and blah, 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 blah. To, to look how, how they demolished that top team that was hot in the thing, and, you know, things happen, cookie crumbled, you know, and then Tom Brady to come here and start getting demolished the same way, and then put that, all right, I'm Tom Brady on, and actually bring his team back, to, and then it comes down to a field goal. He loses by a field goal. He doesn't lose. 20 what is it 30 to 3 he doesn't lose because that's if you if you take away the second half points he loses 30 to 3 that's what i, I want everybody to so, understand here tom brady best- he played he didn't play good in the first half and i think that <laughs> him. I agree. but coming out in that second half i think tom brady played a lot better he was hitting passes he was getting his team down the field to put points on the board and Leonard fournette came out and he was he was coming that's in and doing beast. what he needs to do here and there, and he got two mm-hmm. touchdowns from it. So you got to give him – he didn't need to throw touchdowns. He had Leonard Fournette to, down there to do big boys. Well, I was going to say his his best throw of the day was the touchdown pass to Evans, but, like, I was paying attention to a lot of his throws, and, like – Yeah, he, he, me too. He was off target a lot. Like, he had open receivers, and he was thrown behind or thrown mm-hmm. too high. Or, Another like, time. a lot of times – a lot of the catches that the receivers made – yeah, we're kind of bailing him. time out because they were yeah. not in stride, not on target. They had to make difficult catches. Like, so I think overall Tom had a really bad game, like for Tom standards. 
Mm-hmm. I think I think it's random. also the fact that they also had all these injuries for, to the wide receiver position, and you know you have to build that chemistry with those new receivers so quick. I mean, I'm I'm not here to give Tom Brady excuses because trust me, I think he gets enough of them. But I mean, I just yeah. will say, I just will say that you know that is a lot easier said than done. You know, just I mean, yeah, because you need people run routes differently. Chris Godwin doesn't run routes the same way as Scotty Miller does. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so it's like you just got to kind of get to learn. And I mean, don't get me wrong. They have been practicing together, but I mean, practicing together for a week versus, you know, mm-hmm. getting reps mm-hmm. in the entire year. It's like it's two different things. And yes, I mean, I'm like I said, not making an excuse for Tom Brady, because, yes, some of those throws should have been made. Mm-hmm. They should have been on target. Mm-hmm. No excuse for that. The but, Rams was in his head. Yeah, I, th- I think I think it was that was just a part of that Rams defense. And the Rams defense showed is like you know we gave all we're, we're not just we're not just we're not just a front a front a front four a front seven that's good no it's our whole defense is good you know yeah, as I, a unit as a unit this team is that's deep I think that is they're, the best defense in the together. league they're, they're built by a long them. shot I I think it's not even close I, agree. Mm-hmm. I mean I, whether you're talking secondary whether you're talking the front whether you're talking linebackers whether you're talking cornerbacks I mean every single you look at every single position you say damn he's pretty good he's pretty good yeah. He's pretty good. And the, the list just goes on. The list the list goes on. And, you know, playing against a hardcore defense, only time you're going to score is when they're playing prevent. That's, I mean, yeah. that's it. And what that's, that's literally what happened. So, yeah, I, I, I think it just goes to show that if Tom either doesn't get lucky or the other team doesn't screw up or the other facets of the team, the other parts of the team don't bail him out, then he just can't do it. I wouldn't say that. Tom has proven. I wouldn't he say that either. Yeah, Tom has proven he. Got well, that. when you go, when you look at all the examples of when he's ha, he when he has done it, he's been bailed out one way or the other. And when you look at the examples of when he's lost and no other part of the game or player so what, what, or what other way was team, he bailed out in the in in the Atlanta win? The Atlanta win. Uh, well, two two plays he got bailed out. One was Edelman making that catch that he probably never should have made, and then two was um. Shanahan calling a pass instead of a run when they were in field goal range to go up by uh, to go up by 28 points instead of 25. So if you remember the drive, it was like, I think either right before halftime or in the third quarter, uh, they were, they were in field goal range and it was third down and they called a pass instead of a run. So if they called a run for, and they gained no yards, they would have kicked the field goal and the lead would have been insurmountable. Um but they took a sack because they called a pass and then they had a punt. So because of that bad play call, it, it allowed them to, because let's say they, they, let's say they get the field goal, right. Then Tom would have needed another extra possession to get another score, whether it had been a field goal or a touchdown. So because that the Falcons couldn't put up any points on the board right there, it allowed them to have just enough, um, just not enough lead in order for them to score in the amount of possessions that they scored in. Right. So that doesn't happen. It doesn't matter what Tom does it. Like, you know, look, being, being a Steelers fan, I'm, I do not like Tom Brady. I'll be the first to let you know that right yeah. now. I, I can't stand him. I love it that he moved to the NFC because I don't have to deal with his ass anymore. But the thing is I used to, I used to be the type that would, you know, come up with so many reasons of why I don't think he's the goat. I don't think he's good. I, don't, I mean, I think that was just me being delusional. And you learned to respect him. And then I grew up. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. And then I grew up. Same and it's just like, I used to come up with some, I was yeah. like, oh, well, Adam Venetary saved him. Tuck Rule mm-hmm. saved him. Spy mm-hmm. Gate, mm-hmm. you know, Deflate Gate. I mean, because, <laughs> you know, because I mean, like, I'm already on four. You know, like, I yeah. keep you going. Adam Venetary twice, if we're being honest. Twice, So it's yeah. like, so it's like, you know, I, but I just think that, you know, I what it, talking about legacy wise, I don't think this affects Tom too much. I really don't think so because he ran. Oh, definitely not. I don't think it affects him too much. It just validates that I'm right. (laughs) I just think, I just think that, you know, people don't like it when people, when things go right for people without reason behind it. And, you know, I just think Tom Brady is one of those people that a lot of things do go right for him. Yeah, exactly. But sometimes that's all you need, but sometimes that's all you need. Because think, think about the Eagles Super Bowl, right? Uh, There was literally, no excuses for Tom. Like, th- this is a point where we're like, all right, our defense ain't that good. The Eagles was hot that year, though. No, they I know. Were. But listen, but they listen. Were. The and they defense... did the same thing we did. Momentum. Momentum goes a long way. 100%. Defense, Especially right. in the playoffs. Listen, so so Tom's Great. defense was just okay, right? 
the Eagles didn't make any mistakes, right? So, so literally, what does it come down to at this point? It comes down to like, oh, this guy's the GOAT. He's supposed to win the game because there's no other factors going on. There's no other anomalies going on. He gets the ball down a touchdown, down five points. He gets the ball twice, two tries to just, all he's got to do is score a touchdown. If you're the greatest football player ever, you score a touchdown, you win the Super Bowl, and you get two tries at it, and he couldn't do it. Mm. But you know how many times he did do it? Not yeah. very many. He's done it, he's done it a handful of times. Yeah, not very right. many. Keep counting. Give, me, give me another Keep example counting. of the same scenario Keep where counting. he has done it. You can't. Um, Go ahead, T. <laughs> you can't. There's... I can't off the top I'll do it for you real quick. I'll do it for you real quick. I'll do it for you real quick. February 2002, right? That was his mm. first Super Bowl. The that defense destroyed Del Home. Nine sacks, three fumbles, right? Uh Great the, the Pats had That's to punt the ball seven times. That means Brady failed seven times to, to move the chains, right? So they, they didn't win because of Brady. Then the next one, 2005, right? Or no, I'm sorry. Yeah, 2000. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I think, GK, I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going with this. And I got to say, I think that we start to stat watch too much. I think yep. we don't watch the game. So this the this game. that's right, the eye but, test. but your, your the eye test, test right. The gotta, eye test, Got to yeah. go right along with it. We can't just look at stats yeah. as a whole. We know Tom Brady is great. We know he's one of the clutchest quarterbacks in the league, his numbers. It's false. That. Give me examples Did then. I, I, I could swear I heard that the one of the announcers in the game said that Tom Brady has 100 games or something like that. How many Super Bowls does the guy have? Tell like, me that. Yeah. yeah, but come on, I, I, bro. Listen, I can go over How every single Super Bowl, Super Bowl right now. That's that's fine. But when you're talking about this, is where I would I'm, I'm I would like take everything I say out of it. Football is more of a team sport. Thank so, you. So yeah. that's why I say that's why when you when you hear people argue the Giants and they always say defense won that game, I'm always on the opposite side, aside saying offense played the big majority in that game. Just like we're going to say offense played the big majority. You know, defense also plays a big majority. So if Tom right. Brady has a defense that's adequate, then, yeah, some of the mistakes he makes, everybody makes mistakes, every quarterback. Mm -hmm. There was mistakes made all over the place in this in, in this champ in championship game. I mean, mm -hmm. in this uh, division round. And there was yeah. mistakes by everybody. So to, to just hold Tom Brady's mistakes because people call him the GOAT ain't fair because we didn't just do that a couple of conversations ago with Aaron Rodgers. And some people yeah. have him as the GOAT. Some people have him in the GOAT conversation. And somebody, some people have him as the best quarterback. Definitely not me, but, mm -hmm. that's, that's but let's get to this, let's get to the me. Chiefs game because we can stay yeah. on this all day. Let's get to the Chiefs and Bills game, all right? So Chiefs and Bills, mm -hmm. I said it last episode. What did I say, Rory? Let me see if you remember. What did you say? Because I was, was so caught was, up on what I said. <laughs> it was going to be a shootout. That's what I said. Yes, yeah, you did say I that. I said Correct. it was going to be a Correct. shootout, and look, look what Correct. happened. Look what happened. It, now, listen. It was that. Listen, I'm going to start this thing off by just looking at you guys and saying this. I take what I said back about Josh Allen. All right? That boy is special. He is. Yes. He's special. He's yes. special. All right? But I need I need him to, to do more. He's got to get past the Chiefs because he's going to see them for a long time, bro. Yeah. He's going to see these cats for a yep. long time. And you don't want to build up a resume like Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs against the 49ers. Oh right? my you don't want to be 0-6 versus the Chiefs. All right? You don't want to do that. You got to win one of these games. I felt like this was the game that they were going to do it, even though I picked the Chiefs to win, just the way the game went. Touchdown, touchdown in the first quarter. Touchdown, touchdown in the second quarter. Touchdown, touchdown. To nine points by KC in the third in the third quarter, fourth quarter fifteen to to thirteen. Like it was, it was like no defense or offense, and I loved it. I loved every yeah. minute because, <laughs> like, what was it? What was the the time when when Patrick Mahomes? I think he got the ball back in the second quarter. Yeah. What, oh, good. Was it the second quarter? At the end of it, when he got the ball back, yeah, and he just yeah. it was like a couple of seconds or something. He went. I know he, he did it in the fourth. I know it was the fourth quarter, but I think he did it uh, uh, another time. In the second, as yeah, well, in the second where he just right down the field, like dump, like. I was at it, the game. I ran to the bathroom and we're driving the ball. I'm like, what, I'm like what's going on? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, hey, tell us your man. thoughts, T. Yeah, go ahead, T. Um, so that was like definitely the best game I've ever been to in my life, and I'm glad I got to experience it. But it was a emotional roller coaster 
Mm-hmm. Highs and lows all over the place. I mean, Josh Allen is the man, though. I think this is the next Tom Brady, Pat, Peyton Manning. This is the next rivalry like that. This is going to be the next 10 years. You're going to see Josh Allen. You're going to see Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs and throw in Joe Burrow in that mix as well. But what a game. It was a shootout. No defense. Um, that one touchdown really impressed me by Josh Allen when we, we got up 23 to 14. First play, he answers with a 75 yard bomb that Gabriel mm-hmm. Davis. I was like, wow. I was crazy. like, he, this man is different. I was like, he's different. Crazy. Yeah. Josh I'm, Allen's different. Mm-hmm. He's a special player. And it's hard to compare him to anybody because of the legs, um, yeah. the ability that he has to move around the pocket. And it was yeah, just I heard an definitely analyst the best say, game. And I, I have said this uh, before too. Like when it comes to Josh Allen and you're talking about amongst the other quarterbacks, we got to. We got to stop and think, like, are we dropping Lamar Jackson now? Like, is he not up there and still in that conversation with Patrick Mahomes? Because that's all we hear is Patrick Lamar, Patrick Lamar. We don't right, hear Lamar right. Josh, Lamar Josh, or Patrick Josh that much. Only when I it still comes think... to the matchups in the playoffs do we hear that. But throughout mm-hmm. the re- all, whole regular season, all it's these analysts Lamar. say and all these fans say is Lamar versus Patrick, Lamar versus Patrick. See, that's the thing, though, is that Josh kind of had a shaky regular season. I mean, don't get me wrong. It wasn't bad by any means. But for him, for what we expected coming off of last year, we expected him to take that big next leap. Not not next step. Yeah. We expected him to take a leap. And it was it was a step, but it was not a leap. So I think everyone was kind of underwhelmed just to start off the year with him. But, I mean, Josh Allen is in his bag. Josh Allen is totally in his bag, man. And I've I've been I've been so high on Josh Allen for I mean, coming out of Wyoming. I mean, I loved watching him in college, you know, but it's I think one of his most slept on. I mean, we all know he can move. We all know that, but that man has a cannon. I think he has the strongest arm in the league. And I I'm willing to put him up against anyone, even Patrick Mahomes. And don't get me wrong, Patrick Mahomes yeah, is not no. a pushover when it comes to throwing no, the ball. No, I agree, man. So I agree. So, We're running there. Yeah, or running. Yeah, that's running. what I'm saying. Josh Allen can move, man, and he's a pretty big guy. I don't know if no, you I'm guys... talking about Patrick, too. Patrick can move a little bit. Yeah, he was moving. He can move. Year, I'll give he you some move. stats real quick. Josh How tall Allen, is Josh Allen? Josh Allen. Allen. That. Josh How tall Allen. is Josh Allen? Josh he's six, Allen. Six. six foot six. Yeah, he's, he tall. he's six six, and he can I move think. like that. Listen, I'm tall. I got, I'm six one. I got a long stride. He got a long stride, bro. That's what it is. He got, he got a good five inches on you. Yeah, you got a long stride. That's good, but I'm telling you, my best friend's 6'3". So I'm telling you, me and my best friend raced. I tell you this, me and my best friend raced down the streets of New York. His sister was in the mid, in the window of the projects on the ninth floor, bro, watching us. And when we got upstairs, she said, all I could see was your necks, bro. I couldn't see your bodies, your legs, nothing. That's how fast we run, all right? I'm just telling mm. you, all right? But look, Josh Allen had 11 carries for 68 yards. He's the running back. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. The, but, Patrick, the, the, but Patrick Mahomes had seven for 69. And a mm. touchdown. Mm. So let's not act like... He can't, you know, run, but I want to keep can. the GK with this. Uh, what's his name? Uh, um, Davis on the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I don't know his first name. Gabriel Davis. Davis. There you go. Eight yeah. catches for 201 yards and four touchdowns. Amazing. Amazing night. That boy was Amazing, lighting it up. Yeah. Josh Allen was looking for him all night He because he, he was like, yo, he's going to find a seam hole, something. He's going to torture him, and he did. But uh, on the other side, Tyreek Hill had 11 catches for 150 in the touchdown. So what are your thoughts on the game, GK? Um, I'm just – I'm more impressed by the Chiefs' offense than the Bills' offense just because I think the Chiefs' defense is not very good. Um, and, yeah, Davis did his job. I mean, I don't think he did anything spectacular. I think it was more – like what he what he his stat line ended up being was spectacular. Yes, don't mm. get me wrong, but what I'm saying is like <clears throat> he's the third guy, the third option, right? So when he's matched up against the Chiefs' third option defensively, right. when the Chiefs are already not that good. Like his, his he's just way better than the Chiefs' third best guy, especially when Matthew was already out of the game. So I think that's why Davis was able to be so productive, but um. And yeah, as far as Josh Allen goes, um, yeah, he's incredible. And the thing that concerns me with him, though, is I think it's mostly due to his athleticism. I don't really think 
I think very little of his success is due to being cerebral and like his reads and X's and O's. I think it's just, he's bigger, faster, stronger, and can throw farther and faster than pretty much almost anybody in the league. And I think that's why he's able to have the success that he has. And I do think he'll be able to keep having that for a while, especially because the bills defense is as good as they are. Um, but like I said before, that's why I'm so impressed. That Bills that's defense so, did not look good. They look good out of no. Well, no, but that's that's why I'm so impressed by the Chiefs offense is because I think right. they are that good and the Chiefs offense well, is just I expected that, this, that good. That better, I expected this right? 100%. I did not think any neither of their defenses was going to stand up mm-hmm. and do nothing. But another thing I said last week, Roy, was Kansas City has to take away Buffalo's run game. Now, they didn't take it away, but – they did, mm-hmm. they did, they did good. They had 109 yards, you know, but most of it came from Josh Allen. Exactly. Um, his longest was problem. 14. His longest was 14. That's great. Singletary, 10, 10, 10 carries for 26 yards. But when, that's, we, ooh, that's, that's when we go to the when we go to the Chiefs side, what I like when I see from their rushing game is while, while I'm watching the game is they mixed it up a lot. Yes. Yep. So Patrick has seven carries for uh, 69 yards. His longest was 34, which that run was amazing by him. Took off, saw that thing. Uh, Edwards, seven for 60, longest 22 yards. C-E-H. Hardman yeah. had two for 31, longest 25 yards. Uh, McKinnon? McKinnon? McKinnon. McKinnon. Yeah, McKinnon. Ten, ten, mm. ten carries, 23 That's Jarek McKinnon, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah Jarek. I don't want to click on that name. Ten, ten for 23. So and they had 182 rushing yards. That's that's what you needed to see from from Buffalo in order for Buffalo to win this game. I think if Buffalo could have outran the Bill, uh, the the Chiefs, they could have they put, could have put themselves in a better position. I'm glad you mentioned the run game. I'm I'm so glad because last week that's all I raved on was that the Bills do not have a run game outside of Josh Allen. I've been raving on that all year. They, they, their O line is bad. Yeah. Their O line is bad. O line is awful. Right, so so hold on, is awful. Hold on, hold on. for 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 run for the run game, not for, for the pass game. I don't no, they, think they're, they're bad for pass too. I don't, I don't think they're terrible for the pass game. Well, I think Josh Allen's able to mask how bad they are because that's his true. Pocket presence. That's true. Yeah, ability. he's a big man. He steps up in the pocket. He right, can also exactly. Move. Because he yeah. can scramble around and because he's hard to tackle, but you don't notice how bad their pass protection is because he doesn't take sacks. But that's because of how good he is, not because of the pass protection so good. Mm-hmm. I, I I understand the offensive line thing, but for me, it's like how many people, how many teams in the NFL actually have a good offensive line? Niners. Not not many of them do. Not many of them. Not Let's many be of honest. them do. So, and I want to go back because you know Eli is right, <laughs> right over there. So when we talk about when we talk about Eli and Eli's success, right, and we talk about how Rivers and uh, Ben Roethlisberger and Matty Ice and all these guys have more statistical stats and categories than Eli in in the uh, regular season, right? Do we do we take into account that he most of them years he didn't have an offensive line? No, I I personally do. I do. Because uh, we have had the argument. I don't think he was here, GK. I didn't I didn't even say that, but I thought about it a couple of days later, like. Yo, I didn't even bring up the O line. Like, I didn't get a chance to bring up the O line because I said Eli leads the Giants in all and made all major statistical categories. And the uh, guys that were on the episode was like, it shouldn't matter. He can get in the ring, the Hall of Fame for the Giants. And I'm like, that should matter because if he was with the Giants for 18 years and he doesn't have all the statistical categories, then we'll be saying like Eli's definitely trash. But what I'm saying right. is, for most of the years where Eli's with the Giants. He didn't have protection. He took a lot of hits. He took sacks. Like, that's why he got rid of the ball the way he did. So if we're going to take that into consideration now and today about, you know, the Bills, the whoever, and this team and that team, we got to then look back like, yo, that's a consideration for him too. So I just, I'm saying that to say, like, a lot of teams have an offensive line struggle in this Mm -hmm. league. But what GK said is 100 absolutely percent correct. If you have a quarterback like Josh Allen who who understands pocket presence and can get the ball out quick and understand receive have the receivers that can get space quickly, you that's a that's a recipe to cover up your offensive line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, and it's I I was kind of fighting for them just because. But first of all, that, the run game was non-existent. Devin Singletary, right. I, not, yeah. I think Devin Singletary is a good running back. Do not get me wrong. Wonder how many but there's no support. Carry. There's no support there. Devin Singletary was very good coming out of college. He was very good, you know, his first couple of years in the league. They thought he was about to be their not franchise running back, but like a staple of staple point of that offense. And now it's like 
Josh Allen runs the ball better because the line, because because when they're when the defense sees it's a pass, everyone drops back. There's they're not they're not bull rushing you, you know. So I mean, I think that sets up opportunities for Josh Allen to run. But but man, you need a run game in today's NFL. Don't get me wrong. This is a pass happy league. This is a hundred percent a pass league. Mm-hmm. But you need yeah. to have somewhat of a some resemblance of a run game. A run game, yeah. And, and the Bills don't have that. They just right. got to catch up to them. It's going to catch up to them. I agree. Let, let's let's answer this question, and then we got we. I want to move on. All right, overtime rules, right? Because we know the Chiefs won uh, overtime. Here we go. Coin flip. I'm okay with it. I want it to stay the way it is. For everybody out there, the rules need to change. Let's remember, they just changed the rules a couple of years ago. All right, mm-hmm. so pump your brakes, slow your horses, put them things back in the stable because you ain't going nowhere. You ain't riding nowhere. The rules are the rules for a reason. It's sudden death. If we're two warriors, right, and we just clinging out in swords for 16 hours, bro, once I once one of us get the, the upper hand and, you know, it's over. The sudden death, bro, that's it. So that's yeah. what happens in football. It's right. sudden death. The first team to score a touchdown wins the game. Like, that's it. They shouldn't. Somebody said, give them 10 more minutes and let them play. That's five quarters they're playing. You're going to have a lot more injuries on your team. That's five quarters, stupid. 17 that's games stupid. season now. That's stupid. Yeah. You're yeah, going to have a lot more. be in the hundreds. Teams. Right. You're going to have a lot more teams um, um, injured players. Another up. thing I heard people say is, Oh, uh, you got to give the other team the ball. All right, the way this was going, oh, they said give no. Josh Allen the ball after the touchdown, then he could go down, score a touchdown, and then kick, and then make a two point conversion, and then he wins the game. I'm like, but wouldn't you think the other team would be like, no, I'm gonna go down, score a touchdown, and then go for the two point, get the two point. So yeah. now you got to tie me, and now the game is just gonna continue and continue to the first yeah, team. We'd, we'd be there all day. Right, we'd be there all yeah. day. So quickly, your thoughts on the overtime rules, GK. I think the conversation is just stupid. People are just finding something to like want to talk about. Like it really is has Agreed. no merit whatsoever, in my opinion. Agreed. 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 I think Agreed. a lot. Agreed. I think a lot of it was just that you know we wanted to keep watching a good football game. I really think that's all yeah. it comes down to. It. And everyone, everyone likes it until it happens to your team, right? Team, right. And and another thing is, I'll just say real quickly is that. I think a lot of people are rooting against the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes, so I think that also plays a big part into it. Yeah, and they tried to get the rule changed a couple of years ago when they when it happened yeah. to them, and no team, including the Bills, was on board with it. it. Of course, and like either either keep them out of the end zone in overtime, right? Or win the game in regulation. Win the game in or regulation. Win. Time, yeah, win the game right? when you're supposed to. Or, dude, if yeah. you want to take it that far, like. Josh Allen could have called a running play right before he threw the touchdown pass, took five seconds off the clock before, and then did the play where he threw the touchdown pass. And then the chiefs wouldn't have had any time. So if you would have done that, you would have won the game. Like hey, there's a million ways. The bills, there, there's a billion ways that you could come up with that. Like the bills could have won and like changing the rules is not like, I mean, let's just say you change the rules and then same thing happened where it just comes down to the last thing or whatever, then people are going to want to change the rules again. So like, again, I yeah, agree. Exactly. I agree. I All will right. say on a side note real quick that right. um, if, if for guys out there, if your girl says 13 seconds, isn't long enough, show them this game. Next. <laughs> See, any <laughs> thoughts? All right. So there's a couple of things I wanted to add uh, before I get into the overtime rule. I wanted to throw in about Stefan Diggs only having three catches for seven yeah, yards. I think um, that's a part, of, big part of the reason Gabe Davis had a big game as well. All the attention was going on Stefan Diggs and I believe Dawson Knox as well too. Mm-hmm. Um, but the overtime rule thing um, is it, it's stupid. I mean, I know we wanted to change it back in 2019, but I wasn't a, a part of that. I thought you just got to stay the same. You just got to get a stop. And they could have squib kicked it, and that would have ran five to seven more seconds off the clock, and the Chiefs would only have six seconds left. Now mm-hmm. they would have had the ball in a better position, but what are you going to do with six seconds? I mean, I mean mm-hmm. we don't see – Kyler Murray do something with six or, or yeah, yeah or, like, or you, you could always say you could always say like well let's let's force our kicker to improve their game or whatever right to become more advanced at being a kicker and we will onside kick right there and not even give them a chance yeah like like listen if they have young way coup right remember Atlanta had like three consecutive onside three kicks them. in a row because he's just really good at doing an onside kick like that's a good kicker. 
And like, another thing I was going to add real quick, I'm sorry, is uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I thought this was interesting. They could have held, could have held some of the players on the last plays and it would have uh, ran the clock off as well. Yes. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. We see how, do that how does that work? If, like, so if they purposely committed a holding penalty, it, it would have just affected the clock enough to where. For that play. Yeah. Mm. Bill Belichick used to do that all the time. So yeah. they could have just purposely committed a penalty and. He'd have his whole team hold. He's had his whole team just hold. That's it. Yeah. The game's over. The game's yeah. over. It's, part, it's, it's a manipulation final. of the rules. Yeah. I like it. It's like when you kick the ball off, if you step out of bounds, when you touch it. It's a penalty yeah. and it moves it forward. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, we talked about this in one of our earlier episodes. It uh, it was a 3v3 game to 21, and we all going to pick teams. I don't know if you guys remember it, but it was something mm-hmm. we talked about a lot earlier, and I think. So the way it's going to work is you'll see the screen in a second is we're all going to get turns from the way the names are to pick one player, and then it moves on to the next guy. All right, if a player is picked, you cannot pick that player. <coughs> so, so is this current – NBA players or anybody ever? Anybody ever. No. Anybody pick, ever. Whoever you want to be on your 3v3 team. Whoever you want. All right. All right. And All Ty, right. since you are the guest, I'm giving you first pick. All, All right. right. I'm going to go with LeBron right. because of his oh, versatility. Oh, oh. Gotcha. I can put him at point guard. I can point. I can put him anywhere. Um, I'm definitely going with LeBron there. All right. Roy? Give me his airness. Give me MJ. MJ, you took MJ off the damn table already. Mm-hmm. Um, DK? Um, hmm. I'll take Giannis. Ooh. Mm. D-I-A-N-I-S. Oh, you got it. I ain't spelling his last name. Y'all crazy. Antetokounmpo. Yeah. I'm glad you guys left me my pick because it's the, it's the only person I want. Ah. Oh, okay. Automatic mm-hmm. L. <laughs> Automatic. Yeah. yeah. And then we, we're going to do a snake. He's going to leave her. He's so going to back to back. Line. Yeah, we're going to go back. now. Yeah, <laughs> then we're going to go uh, back to forward now. So Okay, I'm okay. Gonna, you got it. I'm going to go... Oh, I'm Clay wow. Thompson. oh wow wow okay i'm going clay uh gk is on you mm. Mm. i think that's how you spell it right no <laughs> thompson <laughs> that's thomas <laughs> 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 hey, you learned something new about me. I'm bad at spelling. <laughs> Just put Clay. <laughs> I am. Yeah, we, we all know who it is. We all know who it is. Yeah, yeah. Clay. Are you going with GK? Bruce Give me Kawhi. Bruce being wow. A wow. What is that? Kawhi. K-W. K-A. Just, just, just put Leonard. No. Just Leonard. Leonard. It's K-A-W-H-I, I think, I believe. Yeah, K-A-W-H-I. All right, yeah. we got it. See? Teamwork. Give me barbecue chicken. Give me Shaq. Dude, I was going to take Shaq Ooh. with my first overall pick. Hmm. Mm. I like that pick. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take Steph Curry. Ah, I was thinking yeah. Steph, but I was like, eh, I'll take I Clay. can't believe Clay went before Steph. That's crazy. I need the, I I need the shooting. It doesn't matter. I got KD. Why would I go? I, 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 I'm giving it to one of you guys. Like, don't be mad. Like, no, don't be mad. I'm giving it to one of you guys. All right. Yeah, I'm giving it to guys. All right. Um, T, you get to go again. You get to go again. Okay, again. Um, I want a big. I was, I was wanting Shaq. Mm-hmm. Since it's all time, I'm going to go way back in the day. I'm going to go with Wilt Chamberlain. Oh, my God. You took my damn pick. (laughs) Oh, see, this is where I'm going to make or break it right here. You know what? Uh, Give me all time. (sighs) Give me Larry Bird. Give me Larry Bird. GK is so long. It's an interesting team there. It is. I like it. No one from today. 
That's that's perfect because yeah, GK is on you, but Ty got a mixture two today, one old. Mm -hmm. Let's see how GK finishes. Um. This this is the tough round. I think this is the toughest round. So yeah. Oh. Mm, he's thinking. I, 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 had a, I had a tough time. Go ahead. I, I have a couple of different things. I did too. Uh -huh. A couple of different ways I want to go with this. Um. Five seconds remaining. Um. Well, wait. We're we're going against each other, right? So yeah. hold on. Let me let me look at your teams. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> He's, in back. He's doing scouting. He's scouting. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Said, no, let me said, let me hmm. just see matchup wise real quick. Yeah, Who's gonna guard gotta Will? Matchups, yeah. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Uh, who's guarding yeah, yeah, yeah. Will right now? No, exactly. Um. Okay, I can do that. That. I go point guard here or center and just I can make KD just hand mm. that. Um, but then you're gonna have to guard me as well. So let me Giannis get. Is crazy. Let me get. Let me get. Uh, uh, The pick is in. <laughs> honestly, honestly I'll, I'll take Tracy McGrady. Team back. Yeah, okay. Over over Kobe. That's less wow. that's interesting. I like it though. Oh, that's that's interesting. Yeah. You just gave me a name. I didn't even think about Kobe. Yeah, I didn't even think about Kobe. Otherwise, I, I was thinking about going uh uh Santa, but now because like... defensively. Yeah, can I change mine to Kobe? I forgot about no, Kobe. It's over. It's no, the turn. pick is already. <laughs> it's my turn. Once I write mine was been Kobe and Bird. I was, well, especially I was if Troy doesn't pick Kobe, then I'll take Kobe. Nah, I, just, I, just, I just forgot no, about no, no free agents. It turns over. Um, then now I'm like, should I go Kobe? Because then I could just have Kobe be my one. Where who um, who guarding Shaq? Who guarding Shaq? Shaq ain't guarding KD, and neither is Will. So y'all done. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. If I put Will every every three. shot you miss is a board. That's hey, an easy board. KD ain't missing. That's all it Shaq's is. Shaq's gonna be putting up Wilt numbers. Okay. Um. And do I want Kobe or do I want Kareem? Mmm. KD Clay Kareem sound good. Three Ks. Hey, well, hey, three three Ks is never good. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> three Ks is never good. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's be careful here. <laughs> take Kareem. Um, I go Hakeem. <laughs> oh man, uh, this is hard. Damn, you said Kobe, and I just flipped it because I was going with with the. <laughs> yeah, tough one. Um, Roy's team's good, but even if I go Kobe, it's the same yeah, thing. If I go Kobe, it's the same thing. MJ, Shaq, and Bird is crazy. Yeah, I just, All I right. just, I just think Kareem fits with the team better. If I get Kareem now, I got a legit big man, and now yeah. I'm like, who y'all got to stop KD? Because LeBron can't stop KD. We know that. I don't know about all that. Katie had to go to the set. That Katie had to go to the best team. I don't know about that. No, oh, uh, he's a KD <laughs> hater. No, the best, yeah, the best yeah. team won in KD. What you talking uh, about? KD's already defeated they mentally. Needed them. The best team won in KD. Right, Kareem Katie's, Katie, Katie, Katie's gonna walk up to this court, see everybody there, and be like, "Oh my Achilles! Oh." Yeah. Uh, All right, no, guys. He's, he's to gonna demand a trade to my team. Yeah. All right, guys. If you got this far in the video or in the audio, man, make sure you hit that like button, especially over on YouTube. Oh, Help us out with the God. algorithm over there. But for you listeners, I'm gonna read you the team. So it's Ty, Roy, GK, and myself. All right, Ty has LeBron, Steph Curry, and Wilt Chamberlain. Roy has MJ, Shaq, and Bird. GK has Giannis, Kawhi, and T Mac, which is an interesting mix. Uh, and I have KD, Clay, and Kareem. 
All right. So if you guys let us know who win, that would be uh, who got the best team or who you think, what, what team you think will win on a three on three game to 21. And uh, we get at it. I think my team got it. That's that's oh. what I'm saying. I don't know. Katie, Katie might join me or uh, Royce. James yeah, so I think I think Katie's going to. And if LeBron's team doesn't do good, he'll just trade everyone away. So it's yeah, <laughs> then I'll be without a team, man. So all right, moving Space on. Jam. I, I heard this conversation and I saw it on I saw it on Facebook and uh, I wanted to bring it up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to discuss who we think is the best point guard by ranking them one through four. Cool. All right. That's a surprise. Okay. I didn't tell you guys who's ranking them, but we're ranking them today. The four point guards are Kyrie, Steph, Westbrook, and CP3. Ty, since you're the guest, we're going to start with you. So you said start, uh, Kyrie, Steph, Westbrook, and CP3. Mm-hmm. Rank them one to four. Right, I'm going to put Steph at number one. Um, Kyrie at number two. CP at number three. Um, definitely Russell Westbrook last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> GK, I, about that. GK, what's your four, man? Um, it's just like who I like the best, or who I think is, is this your right player. player. Yeah, who you think are the from the top bet the best to the to the least. So whoever you think is the best, PG to out of these four to the to the worst. Okay. Um. It was two, Russ, Kyrie, PG, or uh, CP, and who was the fourth one? Steph? Steph. Steph. Yeah. Okay. You need some time to think? Because I yeah. got mine. I got you. Steph, I, I mine's the same exact as T. Steph, then I was kind of close up. This was my only one I kind of was just thinking about was CP3 and Kyrie, but I mean, I got I Kyrie. I can agree, yeah. And then CP3, and then West Brick. Yeah, Brick. <laughs> also less brick i think that's that's mine i'm pretty i'm pretty safe on that only one i can make an argument for switching is, is cp3 and Kyrie. yeah I could, that's what i got it i was thinking that too man i was in my head i'm going cp3 mm. or Kyrie there so you got gk Where don't tell me doing? westbrook's first yeah, i think he is oh, <laughs> oh my God. well like well. i'm just thinking ah. i'm just thinking like if i was if i was to construct a team who, which of the four would I want as my one? I would want Russ first. What? Um, and then oh, he's not conducive for winning, man. Heard it here first on from the sideline. And, and then, like, like if we were playing pickup basketball and I was picking teams, and I had a choice of those four, I would pick Russ. Um, oh, walk off now. Or... So then, then it's a tie between Steph and Chris Paul. Probably, I'd probably pick Steph second. Chris Paul third and Kyrie last. You That's would rather have all right. I'm, I'm just, I just want to ask. I just want to ask a question. I just want to ask one question. You would rather have Westbrook over Steph Curry. Yes. See, but I, I, got, I gotta let it, that marinate. The question is, is Steph Curry a true point guard? So I get it. But no, nah, I'm going, I'm going. Uh, okay. I'm going like who's had a more still. successful career? Steph, obviously, but, but I'm, I'm just going, saying if if we were to play a pickup game outside in my driveway, like I'm picking Westbrook. Who's I'm the best point guard? Staff. Who's the best? Who's the best point guard for that whole group? I think there's a clear cut answer. Oh, I probably yeah. Chris Paul. Then, if you say it like that, uh, I I see where you're going with it, that. It depends, I, it depends, I, how, you it. It depends how you want to look at it. It depends how you want to look at it. Like, yeah, you who, say who, best who's the best be floor staff. general? So, like, to me, a true point guard is a floor general, right? So, who's the best floor general of the four? Who's the Chris best Paul? player? Who's the, the best CP3. player? Who's the best player? Yeah, the best player is definitely Steph Curry. Steph Curry is probably point guard the most talented. Question. Like, I most was, advanced. I don't care. I don't care how you DK. word it. I don't care. Okay, I get well, I, Listen, who is, the be- who is the better point guard? So, that's how you're ranking them. So oh, Chris best, Paul. Chris Paul. Chris Paul. From, so, best to worst. So, give us your rank again from best to worst overall game. In the NBA, who is the better point guard to the out of these four? To who's the who is the overall leader? game or better point guard? Better point guard. What's okay, better, better, point better point guard. Better, better, better point guard goes is, into overall game. No, two different things, but two different things. Better better point guard though for me is Chris Paul. And then I see where you're going with that. Uh, I don't agree. And then 
tie between Curry and Westbrook. So, they're all point. The thing is, they're all point <laughs> guards. They're all point guards. So we're ranking who is the best. Who's the best? You want the best? Okay. I, I get what you want because who's the best floor yeah. general. Okay, that's a different ah, argument. But then on offense, that's a different on defense too, because ah, 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 defensively, it's Westbrook hands down. This is my question: Would you rather have a point guard who can't shoot, or a point guard who can get rebounds and assists, or well, a point guard that well, can shoot a lot? Well, of the way things? I look at it is like. Like if of the four guys, if I'm like, if I have to pick one of those four to lock down somebody else, uh-huh. the answer is Westbrook hands down. Who would you rather have on the, who would you rather have on the defensive side of the ball? Like GK guarding somebody else. When it's not takes, the fire takes. GK is here with like West, Westbrook's clearly the most athletic. So defense comes down to athleticism. So your best defensive guy there is going to be Westbrook. Am I wrong? Like, I think you're wrong. I'm sorry. All so, right. Okay, so, so let me ask you. Pick a player on offense, and then if you – would you – okay, so, like, let's say if we took Steph, would you rather have Westbrook guarding Steph or Kyrie guarding Steph? Um, That's a closer one. That's a yeah. closer one in my opinion. So would you rather have Westbrook guarding Steph or Chris Paul guarding Steph? I like CP3 Garden stuff. But CP3 is small, though. CP3 gets cooked by Steph. He's Curry's only like six not foot. very big himself. Curry three got his own highlight of Curry cursing him up. But I'm saying, I like, Chris Paul plays hard defensively, too. <laughs> no, he though. does. No, no, he plays hard for sure, and, he, and he's good at it. But I'm just saying, like, Westbrook's clearly a better athlete. So I feel like he's got, a better, he's got a better chance to stop somebody than the other guys have a chance of stopping somebody. These other three guys aren't getting benched in the fourth quarter of closing minutes. Well, no, that, because that because that's offensively though. So if you're talking about the offense that care. much defense no ability, why would you take them out of the game? Well, though? because if, if, you're, well, if you're talking about running an offense, right, or like who who would you want distributing or having the ball in their hands or controlling your offense? Then it, then it's CP3 because I think yeah, out of them, I can see that yeah, like just court vision, passing ability, like. Telling the people ability to, to do, live where to be others around them. But when we ranked them, you put Westbrook first. Well, that's because I value other things more. You um, you val- okay, just for just for I context. I don't know if I should keep it going. It's fine. Just for context, just for context. You're putting a guy who's number one who got benched in the final five minutes of a game. But what well, but I'm not coaching. You don't that bench team. your best player. But I'm not coaching that team no. and I didn't construct yeah. that roster. If if I'm if I'm constructing my own team and I'm coaching my own team and he's part of my roster on the way I want to run the team, then it, it's different. If I'm coaching the team, I let Russell Westbrook go for a damn Arby's coupon. I don't give a shit. I don't want yeah. to. I don't want to. Fire him. take. I don't want to. Yeah, but you get him out of here. You probably coach the team differently than I would. True. All right. True. I, I got mine. I got mine. I like to win. All right. <laughs> I'm going CP, Steph, okay. Kyrie, Westbrook. Okay. That's what I'm going. That's okay. I, I respect that. I respect well, wait, that the CP3 argument. Second. Yeah, I respect Second. the CP3 argument a lot because CP3, he elevates Steph others Curry, around Kyrie, him. Kyrie, yes, I agree. Oh, oh, I didn't hear you say Steph second. I just thought you left him out. Because I, I don't think you could put Steph anywhere anywhere other than first and second. But I think as an overall point guard, CP3, and then Steph because of what he brings to the game. And then I think Kyrie is just better than Westbrook. That's just my, I agree. my opinion. But let's get into these NBA hot topics. All right. First, we're going to start off with the Grayson Allen foul, right? Yeah. Foul to Alex Caruso. He's been suspended one game. Alex Caruso is now about to have surgery on a fractured uh, wrist or hand, and he's out six to eight weeks. So, just really quick, I wanted to know what you guys what, what you guys thought about it. Was it was it intentional? I think, I think it, it definitely was. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Looking at Grayson Allen, he has a history of this, so yes. it's not like this is the first time he's done this. He knows what he was doing. He likes to get into people's heads, but that's just a dirty play. You can't have that. I think he should have been suspended for more than one game. I mean, somebody got injured off that. That's just I, – I agree. Weird. That could be a career ender there. I mean, I know, yep. I know. obviously, thank God it wasn't, but Grayson Allen, like you said, has a history. He's been doing this since his Duke days. And people, it's not, he's not playing hard. That's playing dangerous. And you can really get someone hurt if you if someone lands the wrong way on that. Yep. Exactly. That would be a career ending. Uh, I don't think it was a dirty play. Either. 
Like, I think if you have a history, though, that kind of follows. See, that's you. the bad. That's history. the bad part about it, because the same thing happens with Kyrie because his history and and all this. And then we judge him for what they are now. I don't think when you look at the play, Grayson intended to. Like no, I think he went up to contest it, and as he was coming down, his arms come down. I, anybody that plays basketball understands when you go up to contest, sometimes your arms you get caught, and y'all guys come down. Yeah, hard. I'm true. one of those I players. Know. I'm just telling you, I'm one of those players. Yeah. When I play ball, street ball, bro, I I used to drive or like drive off a of contact. Like the more the harder you knock me down, the more I was going shit on you. That's just how it was. Like I could recall, and everybody can contest this, even my mother. My mother was sitting on the sideline with a bottle of alcohol. I was playing with my boys. And they know they know my skills, so they kept following me, and I kept hitting my head, and I kept doing that. Oh, so I, I mean, get up, run to my mom, take a drink, and then start shitting on them. So I know, like, when it comes to that, because I, I have people that have stuck their foot on the mine on purpose just to make me twist my ankle to get me out the game because they, they didn't want me to 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 do what I do, and then celebrate it after I twist my ankle. So I I kind of understand it. I know Grayson has that history. But we got to look at it in the moment and not what he has done in the past. Because since Grayson has been on the Bucks, he's kind of changed his character a lot. And you can see so that. He doesn't play game. a lot. No, he, he, yeah. he did when, when yeah, uh, Chris he Middleton was out. When Chris Middleton was out, he yeah, did. Yeah, Middleton. But here's the thing, though. You want to talk about context. Look, that's a clear path foul. There's a reason it's a clear path foul. So people don't do shit like that. That's literally no, the that's reason true. that foul exists. I, that's true. So I people don't, think, don't do that because think, that's a think, dangerous play. And I think he play. deserves a suspension for it, but I'm not going to sit here and say it's intentional because of his past or his, what he used to do. Intention- I've just seen him we try never to know intent. it. Yeah, I just yeah think, we never know I, intent. It's the same argument with the LeBron elbow. Like, we, we, yeah. we, we couldn't we don't know intent there either. We don't know. I don't know if it was, in, if it was intent. But go ahead, GK. I see you, I see you getting twisted. Um, I think there are times where – you can and should maybe take into account the history, but I just don't think it plays a factor in this particular instance because not only do I think it's not a dirty play, I don't even think he was trying to foul him at all. I think he was trying to block him. Like, like, I feel like most of the time you can tell if, all right, they're, they're trying to foul him there to stop the play or they're trying to hurt him or trying to do something dirty or trying to do something that's not what you're supposed to be doing in basketball. And none of that came to mind there for me. Like he was chasing them down. They both went up. He reached his arm out. Like it didn't look like he came in like a safety and was trying to tackle him or something. Like it, to me, it, it honestly looked like he was trying right, to, to me, just block him. To me, where he got me, and I'll agree with you, his arms did get tangled up, but he wraps his arm around his, and then you can see him forcefully go like this. Yeah, it's – I don't, I don't well, agree Well, with because – Wouldn't that be to get your arm back? Arm it's tangled. But you're behind they, him. But they but do it behind. all the time. Listen, they do it listen, all the time. They do it all the time. If, they get tangled. Right, wraps, One person to rip away. They do it all the time. Right, Maybe right, right but, but, but he would he would have been doing the same motion. Like, let's say he reached out like that, and it, and it was on the ball – and in not his arm, right? So, like, let's say he reached out and he grabbed right. a ball and he did the same motion. He would have felt the same way. Well, he would have fell, fell the exact same way, like, and it would have been a clean play. And then no one would say, like, oh, he's dirty. He tried to hurt him on purpose. But that's not no. what happened. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, I know. That's not what happened. But, but, but yeah, let's. Because it is history. But, okay, but, but think about it. Then, then you're saying, like, he was aiming for his arm rather than aiming Aim for, the, for ball, the ball. Right? Well, for me, so, so, he had already but we don't know when his arm was coming around. Yeah, we know it's play. a foul. We agree there, but we, we no, see, no, like, I know. I don't think Grayson intended to to hurt him. That's right, right because because I, we don't know intentions. That's the thing. I, yeah, I, I we could sit yeah. here and talk for five yeah, hours opinion, and say my opinion. Is, yeah, yeah, my agree. Opinion, yeah, I don't yeah. Think Grayson, no, you're by looking open at the to play, have your own opinion. Yeah, by looking at the play, I'm with you guys. I don't think he intentionally was like, oh, let me just throw this dude down to the ground. It would have been and extremely we see, difficult. We see players do that. We see them be take cat and throw cat to the ground on purpose. Like we see it. I don't think that was one. The level of skill that it would have taken to choose and accurately, purposely grab the arm versus grabbing the ball, like to choose one over the other rather than just like it happened co- coincidentally, like there's no way anybody could have been able to do it on purpose. I'll argue against that, but I, I just think that it's just, I think he should have just respected the clear path foul and sort of 
because it's a foul. Well, I mean, none of us are arguing. Yeah. That. But it's yeah, like, no. but it's like that. Would, that's a very dangerous thing to do. Play. Just him even going for that in general is very dangerous. He knows that. He's been playing basketball his whole life. Everyone in the NBA knows that that is a dangerous play. That is a potential career ender. People. That's why people don't do it. I mean, have people done it in the past? Yes, they have. Yeah. But I think that that is such a it's such a dangerous move, not just from your own health, but their own health as well. Because a lot of the time, the people who go and try to make that steal are the ones who get hurt. It's not just always the offensive guy as well. So I think Grayson Allen might have been like trying to have, oh, I got something to prove. You know, I'm not getting as much PT. I mean, now that Chris Middleton's back. So it's like, you know, maybe I, I don't know if that played a part into it. Like you said, we don't know intentions, but I just I don't like that play. I don't like that play at all. I think it's very dangerous. It's a very, it's, I mean, you see what happened from it. I mean, you saw what happened to Caruso and now the bulls are in trouble because they're missing one of their best defensive pieces. So, I mean, like, yeah. I respect that take of like, that's not what they're going to, but it doesn't help. Lot, but it, I, 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 no, I, I respect that take of like yeah, deciding to go for it or not go for it. Like, yeah. yeah I could respect that too. But, um, I think if, if he if he would have made the block, it's like a different conversation. Like if mm-hmm. like yeah, if, if, if it was the exact that. same motions, if everything was the oh. exact same and his hand was just like three inches away hitting the ball rather than hitting his arm, like it, it's a different story. But I do agree in terms of like just trying to go for it at all, that like that part of it's a pretty good argument. I mean, right. that's where his history so, plays in. So let's go get ahead. into hot topics. Yeah. So uh t only thing we like to do here is just just give a fire topic some something that you all right you, that you think so here's people here are I got. shoot the knicks need to trade julius randall mm-hmm. immediately i like that he I I, like i'm that. done with him i'm done with him he's his body language throws me off he's mentally he's like he's checked out of games he's not getting back on defense he's always arguing with the refs this it, i'm done with the man and i'm somebody that bought his jersey i'm done with him I like, to go. I like that. And I think that stemmed from, you know, the whole fan thing. Ever since that, that whole fan thing happened, happened that we talked about, we talked about it here yeah. on the show. Ever since then, it's like things were looking kind of different. I don't know. And yeah. then, like you start to see that stigma around it and then you get to see them playing and it's like, damn, these things are kind of, looks like they're kind of going hand in hand. Maybe they yeah. are, maybe they aren't. But I just kind of, from a, from a, from the sidelines perspective, there you go, title in the name. But uh, it's just like, Freedom. I think I think it's I think it might be over for him in in New York. To be honest with you, I think so too. I, I agree with that. Hot take. It, that is a hot take, but I, I do agree fire, with you. Fire, we call them fire yeah. takes. Everybody call them hot fire takes. takes. Here on from the sideline, it's fire takes. Right? Fire takes. Yeah, so so I got a I got a fire take. Oh, you got another one, T? And then my other one is, and this is going to be hard to say because how early it is. The Knicks should have took Darius Garland instead of R.J. Barrett. Mm. I I believe that, especially now looking back at it, we definitely we need a point guard. We needed a point guard for a long time. I mean, obviously we got Derrick Rose, but he's not the same as he used no, to no, be back in the day. And, you don't need Kimba, to. Kimba's not good no more. Because it's plus yeah, minus. Kimba, Kimba was cooking the other night that he played that game, bro. Stuff he like was. He was. Kimba um, looks. The plus he's minus. Just an offensive, the only thing about game. Kimba is he's an offensive player. He doesn't. He, 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 he no, not a so lick of defense. defense. And that. one more, and Tom, Tom Thibodeau out. should be fired after this year. I mean, I am so sick of this. I, I'm about to get heated got here. Fire takes all on the Knicks. Mm-hmm. Right now. He does not play rookies. Quentin Grimes last night had a plus 21. That was by far the best on our team. I think he got like 15 minutes. Mm. Cam mm. Reddish, we just traded for him. He's like Kevin Knox all over again. He can't get off the bench. Yeah, they said that they gave him a diminished rule, so I don't even know why they made the trade. What's the point of I making that get trade? Why we got him. Yeah. yeah. And then Evan Fournier, it's like he gives leeway to certain players. Like Evan <laughs> Fournier, how is this man still starting, but Kemba Walker isn't? Like Evan Fournier is playing just as bad, if not worse, than Kemba Walker, especially on the defensive side of the ball. It's frustrating, man. Evan, Evan Fournier is someone who should not even be considered no. on a starter. He was great in Orlando. Once he left, you saw that he was just on. He was a he was a decent player on a bad team. Yeah, he did exactly. Some yeah, he did some things though for Boston a little bit towards the end of the season. Oh yeah, going over seventeen for us. Yeah, that was pretty a good. A little bit towards the end. Of the <laughs> that was pretty season. good. He kicked up in a couple of those. those yeah, games. putting up zero points off of seventeen shots. That was good. I mean, hey, glad he was uh, there. 
your favorite player has done it. All right. Um, Child, you know so that. my hot take, I got one. All right, before I kick it to you, GK and uh, Roy, I got one. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the Clippers without Paul George. And it just came out the report that Paul George might have surgery, so he couldn't. He, he might be out the rest of the season. So Clippers on January seventeenth, they scored one hundred and thirty nine points against the Pacers. You might be like, eh, it's the Pacers. It's the Pacers. Yeah. Two days later, on January nineteenth, they scored one hundred and twenty eight points and beat the Nuggets. Okay, right, it's a little more respectable. And then on January twenty yeah. first, no, they didn't beat the Nuggets. They lost by one. I'm sorry, they lost to the Nuggets by one. I think. Oh, and yeah. it was 29-28. And then January 21st, they scored 100 and, I think, two points, but they beat 76 right? My hot take is the Clippers will make the playoffs, whether they get in through the play-in or they get in just by getting the seeding, all right? But Clippers are going to make the playoffs without PG. That's my hot take. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I could see that happening, to be honest. with Just how the West is kind of shaking out, I, I can see that. I can see that. That makes sense, especially with how they're playing yeah. too. Though they're that's not the discount them. right now. So yeah, that's not the discount them at all. I think they're playing very well considering they don't have one of the best players in the NBA. How are they winning? Yeah, yeah that's how, how are, are they, they winning? winning? I, that's what I understand. Like they might be losing, but look at they're, they're playing hard, and that's my that's my. Yeah, I'm, my I'm saying my, like my um, like like they, who. who I I don't follow the Clippers. Reggie Jackson so let's stepping up. Much, but right, I'm go saying, check. let's go check. You know me. I, well, it's I, no. I, I well, there's no Kawhi either, right? There's no Kawhi. No. no that, that's what I'm. That's why I'm asking. Like, where yeah. are the major contributions coming from I'm about to on check. either side? Maybe Reggie question. Jackson. Reggie Jackson did kind of step up yeah. when he first got brought in there. I think he was doing very well. All right, they lost to the Knicks last night, two nights ago. They scored 102 points. Yeah, I Reggie wonder where Jackson, their production. Reggie Jackson had 26 points. Yeah. Um, They're going to need a lot of that. Nick Batum stuck. Yeah. Nicholas Batum. Oh, my God. Uh, Maury <laughs> Jean stuck. He's still around. Zubox had 17. Jackson had 26. And then off the bench, Kennard had 14. And Luke Austin Kennard. Jr. had 13. Hmm. Let's go to the game. The 76ers game is it pretty much the so same well, thing. Well, you said, you said Wagner? Who did you say? Who's that? Who's the other guy you Both said? Austin Jr.? No, before that. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to picture this oh, team here. Kennard? Uh, yeah. Luke Kennard. Yeah, okay. All right, okay. so and then in the game against the 76ers, uh, Batum scored 15. Senior, more senior, senior scored 12. Oh, Mark. scored 12. Jackson, 19. And then Kofi. Had twelve, and then off the bench, Hardestein had ten, and then Kennard had ten. So it's it going to be like, tough to rely on these guys. I was say, none of those are proven people. Yeah, none of them are proven. I guess you could. I mean, you can't even say Reggie Jack isn't proven either. So it's like, I don't know. Well, That's... well, I'm just thinking like he's fine, he's serviceable, but then when it comes down to like against a playoff team in the playoffs in a seven oh, game series, no. They're a yeah. one and done. They're 100 percent a one and done. They they might not even make it out like the that's play. They they're gonna it. get the play. Yeah, they're not gonna go they're gonna bounce. They bounced in the first round, but I think that them young cats out there keep playing. Yeah. Um, how they are? How they are? I think that. They Do they still have Trey Man? Or uh, uh, yeah, Trey Terrence Man. Man? Yeah. Terrence Man. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if he's playing or getting any minutes. You guys, oh, ready for my hot take? Go ahead, Roy. Hit us with my hot hour. take was. I told you. I told you guys about the Memphis Grizzlies. I told you guys about the Memphis Grizzlies, and you guys didn't want to listen. You didn't want to listen to me. I gave the take before it was hot, before it was spicy, before it was fuego. I told you guys that the Memphis Grizzlies were going to represent the Western Conference in the NBA Finals, and you know what? I'm taking it a step further. Wait. They're winning it all. Mm. That's right. Ooh. You can disagree with me. Go ahead, please. No, go we ahead. talked about this, bro. In a slow paced playoff game, all. I don't think the Grizzlies are going to succeed in that. I don't. I, I you know what? I've 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 heard this. Sl- I've heard the slow pace argument. Right now I've they'll heard, play Denver. I've heard they're right too now, young. Right now they will play Denver in the, in the first round. Uh, even though I said previous, I think they beat Denver and maybe the Mavs. 
But after that, like they get out the first round, then what? Now you're looking at Utah. You're looking I don't at Golden State. You're looking at the Suns. Suns. I think they'll whoop their ass. You say you don't think they'll be who GK? Either one of those teams. No, I they'll, think they definitely would be the Utah. Nets and and Dallas. I think they would beat Dallas in a seven game series. I do. I don't think so. They'd I whoop, think Luka, you don't I think they beat Luka, Utah. I think Luca would do this. No, the, Utah. No, I don't think they beat Utah. Utah can't even will. get out of the no. first round themselves. Why do you have so much that, confidence in that's them? That's who they need to play to get out the first round, the Grizzlies. That's my hot take. You heard it here first on, on from the sideline podcast. All right. Well, I, I can't wait to visit take, this. I mean, and the Memphis take. Grizzlies, you see John Morant holding up the MVP trophy. No, go. Can't that's wait. what I was going to say. Go one, go one, more, one more further. Say John Morant going to be the MVP of the league. I'm not He's there winning yet. winning finals MVP. Say it all. You you there. You you got the fire already set, man. It's burning the ball. Finals right? MVP, Your John Your shadow is running. Your cattle oh. is running. This guy is fire. That's fine. He, I was he done, right. He done turned I, into Ghost Rider. You got so look, much fire. Let me, I want to ask you, though, why do you think they're ready already? Like, you don't think it's going to take them another year or two to be that, ready? That would be the only caveat is that they're, they're, they're young and don't have that experience. But, man, I just – like, uh, watching this that, team that's play what I'm asking, is though, so right? much fun. You what makes you think game? that they're ready right now? I think they are ready – because of how they thrive off of each other. You did, I mean, you see a lot of teams and, you know, we all watch a lot of basketball, but I will say that I did not, if I was not a Celtics fan, I'd become a Memphis Grizzlies fan right now. I promise you I would. That's how high on them I are. First of all, their future is great, but we're talking about right now in the present. I think that the way that these guys feed off of each other and the way that these guys support and have each other's backs is unlike almost any other team I've seen in the NBA. I love seeing that camaraderie. You could tell that everyone on this team cares for each other. And, you know, it's like yeah. they're a brotherhood. They're, they're the dogs. They're, the, they're, they're in the dog pound. You know, they're the runt that never got picked up. They're like, it's like everyone's always been doubting them. Everyone's always been hating on them. Every, almost every player on that team has had their, their doubts, even from college to now. And it's like it's the band of misfits together. It's the band of misfits. I want to know misfits. if I want to see them – when they're in the playoffs against a veteran team, if if they somehow go down by a two game deficit, and then how do come they back respond? And win, then I'll be a believer. Like if they like if they do that in the first round, then I will be a believer and believe that you are could be right that they could win everything. But I feel like they that is a do that they might have to pay before they can get to that maybe. level like maybe so they they might they may have to pay that due this year before they can overcome that hurdle maybe next year perhaps i i understand that and i think that's reasonable that's 100 percent reasonable but right now i'm being unreasonable and i feel like that's okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i feel like they're gonna do it man i i really do is just watching this team play and i i understand the argument of you know they can't they can't do it in a slow paced game. They can't, you know, slow it down and stuff. But I think this, they're bringing in the new age of basketball. Where's their defense? Where, where, what's their, what are their major weaknesses? <clears throat> I mean, youth, I mean, I hate to say, it, but youth is a weak, it's a strong point and, and a weak point as well as the experience. I think that if anything, X's does and O's them, wise though, I mean, X's and O's wise, I would say, I think they need to work on their rebounding a little bit both offensively and defensively. Okay. But uh, transition game is breaking phenomenal. News, breaking news. Sean Payton. Sean Payton stepped away from head coaching this season. Oh, wow. Years. Hmm. But wow. Stay, stick with basketball. Who, who left with their hot takes? Who left? GK. What you I, got? I'm good. Go ahead, GK. What's your, what's your fire takes? Fire take, GK. NBA fire take. Well, NFL fire take because now the Saints are in fucking trouble, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Saints, Saints so, fans are in trouble for who that, big that time. Gonna beat them Saints. Who that? They are in who that? trouble. Who um, that gonna be the head coach? Who that gonna yeah. be the <laughs> no. next GM and quarterback? Well, when, when T was talking about the Knicks, honestly, I feel like even though I I pretty much agree with almost everything he said, but I feel like honestly, none of it matters. Like none of it matters and nothing will matter. It doesn't matter who the coach is. It doesn't matter who the players are. It doesn't matter how they play. Nothing is going to change until like 
James Dolan is not he the owner. He still owns the team. That's like, 100% true. I, I feel that's like 100% true. He, no matter he how – Did fire James Dolan? Yeah, like no matter how yeah. ideal of a situation right. we get, like let's say we do get like the optimal coach, the optimal coach with like a, a roster that everybody loves, like it doesn't matter. Like top we're, down, yeah. Lose, we're still gonna lose. Top down, yeah. Mm. Like everyone's set up for failure. Whoever coaches the team, set up for failure. Exactly. Whatever yeah. young players we get, they're set up for failure. It's like failure, no one is yeah. set up to have a good career. <laughs> yeah. I agree. No, that's very true, man. I agree. Dolan definitely – I mean, I know he's been quiet, especially the last two years. I don't know if Tom Thibodeau put his foot in his mouth and said, listen, man, you know, let me run the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, yeah, as long as he's there, nothing's going to change, and I can definitely agree with that. It's an impossible job for anybody, any player or any coach. That's why a lot of those superstar free agents didn't want to go because they're like yeah. – what is what am I what am I going to gain here? Like, there's nothing for me to gain here. <laughs> and then we didn't offer KD a max contract, which is no, I still can't believe that. But. This brings us to the end of the show, so we're going to kick it off with final thoughts. And GK, what's your final thoughts? Um, final thoughts is I think, uh, like what we said earlier, the this week, this past weekend of football was just absolutely phenomenal, and I mean. I, we can only hope that the rest of the postseason is going to be as good as what we've been blessed with so far. Um, and, and yeah, I hope that, uh, you know, because of teams like the Grizzlies and hopefully a, a couple other teams can follow suit, that um, the NBA postseason is going to be shaken up a little bit and um, we'll be able to enjoy that just as much. So hopefully, you know, we're transitioning in, in generations like the way we are in football and yeah. um, we're seeing this new the, like some newer people and um you know both games evolving and competing at a very high level that's a good one i like that that's good hey, what's your final thoughts man you going you going to me yeah okay my final thoughts um one thing i'll add is like what you said this was definitely the best weekend of football i think i've ever seen in my life um that was one of the best football games I well the best football game I've ever been to is just emotional roller coaster though. Um, final thoughts: the Saints not looking good for them. Obviously, with the Sean Payton news just happening, um, and I would like to come back on the show. I mean, I really enjoyed my time on here. So always shoot me a text if you want me back, man. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that will do. Feels good. That was advice, you. Roy. Final thoughts. Final thoughts that. Chiefs and Bills game was very reminiscent and just I put it up there with one of the all-time greats as I do with the Steelers and the Cardinals Super Bowl like this reminds me of one of those type of S games but my my final thought my final final thought is Aaron Rodgers Pittsburgh needs a quarterback Pittsburgh needs a quarterback and I need you to come through please now we got Mike NFL Tomlin. fire takes Mike Tomlin make a move yeah I know you guys are DK, friends look what you started Aaron Rodgers come to Pittsburgh we will get you. Come on, you wouldn't look good in black and gold. We're gonna get you another ring. Let's go. We got the defense. You, we just need you. All right. And my <laughs> final thoughts is thank you guys for watching, man. We appreciate it. Remember, we're over on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and we still do got the giveaway going. I didn't say the question in this episode, so just go back to the last episode, find the question. It is a new question. Um, um, I think I remember it. It's a. Uh, no, I don't remember it. I don't remember the year. So you got to go back to the other episode to get it. Uh, and just run over to Instagram, follow us, uh, like the picture, and make sure you write the answer down below to win that gift card. And without further ado, man, this is your, your boy, Troy. These are the boys. We out. Peace. <laughs>